This is another build sequence uh, to make a bottle. I'm going to combine two functions where I'm going to use a revolve and I'm going to trim that and then stitch the parts together and then do some lofting. So there's a couple of uh, operations to create this. Um, so this is uh, this whole body here is a compound curve. So I'm not emphasizing a ruled surface for PSL label application. I'm going to let that go for this particular design. So that will be a compound curve. So any decoration on this would have to be direct printing because the body is a compound curve. Uh, even a shrink label would not work on this particular design because I have this negative indent area in four locations. So that would be very challenging to get the shrink to go in there. Uh, I mean, shrink technology is getting better and better, uh, but I still think that would kind of web and wouldn't fit in. So this design, with this build sequence, I am going to build the bottle with the closure integrated into the form. I'm gonna build it all at the same time. And I'm just going to trim off the top where the closure is. It's a little different than some of the other build sequences I've been working on, where I would build a bottle design, a shape, and then I would build the closure separately. So it's it's obviously a part that's been built, different, built differently and then put on top. So this one would be, uh, another way to do this is, is very integrated. So I'm gonna to go to uh, my lines that I have set up here and we'll talk about how this is built. And, uh, these curves and the shapes are the aesthetic. So it's kind of arbitrary. There's no fast rules here. So I did want to start with this outside curve and that's gonna be my revolve. So this is a very simple revolve. I kind of determined the size of my base, how far I want it to extend. And then up at the top here, uh, I selected this curve shape. So I'm gonna start with that. And then to do a revolve, we definitely need to have our center line. So I drew a center line that's right here. That's the exact same height of that. And I'm going to revolve around that. So those two lines are my starting point to do my revolve. It's very important that they all line up at the bottom. So when I close the bottom, it's all one surface. We've got to make sure that we snap these. Uh, one way to do that is just draw your center line, uh, the height that you want, and then draw your curve right on snap to that bottom point and draw your curve and then just move it over to you where you want it that guarantees that you have everything lined up so if we go back into perspective view let's just put this into position uh, so i want to revolve this curve around my center point so i'm going to go right to the tool so i'm going to go to my um, surface tools and then right up here at the top i have my options, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go down here, here, revolve. Uh, it's the second from the bottom, the revolve tool. Again, you can put the commands in, but I'm gonna go right to the tool. And I already have selected my point. So the next thing to do in the commands is to select the axis, which is the center part here. We have to do two points. I'm gonna select where it starts. And then I'm gonna go up to the top and select the top. And then this circle comes up. I have my orthographics set. So you can see this is snapping every 90 degrees because it's snapping orthographically. I want that. I'm going to do a partial revolve, which is different than the other revolve, right? Did a full 360 because I wanted the shape all the way around. I'm going to do a partial revolve because I'm going to trim it. And then once I trim it, then I'm going to rotate that trimmed revolve four times. So I get that exact same kind of V cut that I have. So this will be a partial revolve. So I'm starting, starting here. And I'm just gonna snap over to the 90 degrees, which is right here. And I'm just going to click. And then there's my partial revolve. So we'll look at this from the top view. Let's select this, go to top, and we can see it over here. So I wanna rotate that to the front on center. So I'm gonna use uh, the numerical value for that. So if I wrote it, uh, rotate it 90 degrees, that'll bring it to here. And then if I rotate it another 45, it'll put it on center right on the front. So that's how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go back up to uh, my tools up here. I'm going to go to uh, rotate. I have my part selected. I'm going to select in the center. And then numerically, I'm going to go up top there. So I know this is negative 135 degrees. So negative 135, enter. So now I brought that right to the front on center. So I know that's perfectly centered. So that's the brings us to the next step. Let's go to front. So I didn't just do this magically. I did some trial and error. 
So I, I made that revolve, rotated it, trimmed it, looked at it, copied it around. It took a few times to do that too. I sort of had this aesthetic in my mind, but it took a while to get there. So just because I have a sketch of it, I needed to figure out this geometry and get it to all work here. So it does take a little time to so be patient. Uh, I did have this all worked out. So here's, that's my revolve from the front view. So I needed to create this kind of um, V cut shape. So let me just move this out of the way for a second. And I'll show you how I did that. I think I can just grab this. Curve. All right, I'm just gonna go to my move tool. Let's just push, push this over here for now. Okay, so this is where I started. So I'm just gonna go with my uh, arc tool. Go to my curve tools, and I believe I used radius three point selection. So I know I want to come from this point up here. This is right on the edge of this uh, partial surface. So I'm going to take orthographics off. And I believe I snapped right down here. It was kind of convenient. I'm snapping to the center of that center line that I had created to do my revolve. So I'm just going to click there. And then I have my third option is where this arc was going to go. So this is the part that took a little time. Uh, if I come way in here, a little bit too much of a curve because I, I don't have any space down at the bottom of that little V cut. So if I come out here, that didn't quite work either. So as you can see, I have it already determined, but it was about here somewhere. So I'm just going to click. And now that curve has been created. So from the front view, it looks like a straight line, you know, curved in this axis, but on one plane. But since I'm snapping to these points that are in different parts in space, it created a curve. Let's go to... wireframe. So here you can, this is the line I just created. I'm going to select that. So it's curving in space. I, I snap to this top point over here, which is on my surface. And then I snap to the center point on that line, which is back in space. I don't need the curve on that axis. I only want to look at it from the front view. But it's okay, because I'm going to use that as a trim line to trim the surface. So you'll see it'll still work. So I could do this at straight lines, but I wanted to make sure I was snapping. I just wanted to show you why these are curved. It makes it a little bit more confusing than necessary. So I'm just going to undo that. And I just took that, and then I mirrored it over to the other side, and then I joined them together. And that will be these two pieces right here. So it's that curve. I mirrored it over and joined. So now this is, these are two connected lines. We need that so I can trim this surface. So let's go back to the front view. So now I want to trim the surface with those two lines. So I'm gonna go over here to my, I keep calling it trim because that's the term my other software uses. Here they call it split. So I don't wanna confuse you. Here it's split. So this is a split tool right here. I am going to select this surface, but I'm going to select the part I want out here, which is on the outside. So I'm going to select that and enter. And now I want to select these lines right here and enter. Let's go into perspective. Let's go into shaded. It keeps both parts. So I'm gonna select this part that I don't want in the center. I'm going to delete that. So now I've taken that nice revolve, that 90 degree revolve, put it on center, and I trimmed it right in the middle like this. So that part is ready to go. It should be very clean. Everything is on center and there's no double points here. So sometimes you have to check and make sure. That's why I'm snapping to all of these things. So it's a very, very clean piece of geometry. Because I'm going to take this and revolve this around and stitch them all together. So I need that to be perfect. The next part I want to do is I have created this arc here in the center. We'll look at that from the right side. That re represents the center of that V shape that I have. 
So again, I am snapping up to the top of this edge up here. I think I created a line here, and this took a little bit of time to figure out exactly where this point was, but I need that right on center. And I'm snapping down to this point here, and I want this arc to be away from the front, and you'll see how that's going to work. So again, this took time to create this curve. So I, I created the curve several times, and then I lofted it with the other curves to see how it worked. And then I stitched it and radiused it and checked everything. So it took a little time to do that. Um, but I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. So I'm just going to get right to the point. And I have these all set up. So what I want to do now is I want to um, look here. I am determining draft angle. Right now, it's a little hard to visualize that. But I'm looking at this from this angle here. And I'll show you this later. I need this curve to not create an undercut when I loft to that curve. And right down here, I'm getting really, really close. But since that's such a close uh, area right there, I think I can get away with that. So we'll talk about molding after I build this. This will become apparent. Again, that was a little bit of trial and error. So I'm trying to get this beautiful aesthetic working in four locations around the bottle. But I also need it to be moldable at the same time. So that's that combination of the aesthetic and the functionality. So loft, and I'm going to loft from this curve in the back. And I'm going to loft to this edge here in the front. And then press Enter. So sometimes it doesn't work, so you have to try both directions. So that's a nice, clean loft right there. So I've created that surface that goes back. So that looks really good. So again, I could. Loft it again by using those two lines, but since I know this is perfectly symmetrical, I'm just going to go back to my front view and I'll just mirror that over. And then here's the mirror tool. Again, making sure I snap, I could snap up to this point, which is fine. And I can snap to this point down here. I'm just going to slick that and then go all the way up to the top here and snap to that point. So now I know I have that lined up. So let's go back to perspective and I have that in shaded. So now I have those two pieces coming in there. All of these hard edges that I'm creating are going to be radius. So that's another variable. I did this several times and then went back in to make sure I could radius these because this is a very sharp point down here. So I need to radius this here, uh, a fillet in this um, negative curve. Here. And then I have these two positive areas here, which would be radiuses. And those all need to be curved. And then they're all going to be connected up here. So there's a lot of things that need to happen. And I got this to work. So I'm going to select. I have three surfaces now. And I think I'm not going to stitch them yet. I think I will do that all together. So what I'll do now is I just want to revolve that around four times. So let's go back to uh, top view. And here it is. So now I'm going to uh, rotate. I guess I can rotate multiples. Let's see. I'll just do it one at a time. It's fine. So I'm going to select the center here. And I can do this with the commands, or I can just snap to this point. Uh, I do want to do a copy. So let's go up here and uh, copy no. So let's make it copy yes. So I just clicked on that additional command. So that will go to here. And then I can just keep going. And then I'm going to right click so it'll stop. So now I have this uh, rotated around here four times. Let's go back in perspective so we can see what this part looks like. So here it is. So I have this nice, beautiful kind of like leaf pattern uh, coming in four times all the way around. So this geometry in the center will obviously go away when I make that center finish and closure structure in the middle. Um, but this all looks really, really good. The thing is, all these points, I got a lot of points going on here. They all need to be perfectly aligned. And this one out here needs to be perfectly aligned. So when I go back in radius and put all this together, it'll be a nice clean shape. So excellent. So the next part we have to do is the, um, the closure part. So let's go back to um, 
And so I copied all the surfaces that we had just created and they are still separate surfaces. And I made a copy of them and moved them over to another layer. I'm trying to keep all the layers uh, separated so I can do this tutorial again in class. So now we have all these surfaces in, uh, in the center here. So I'm gonna go to the front view. And you can't see anything. Let me just change the color on this. I'm gonna go to black. So we can see the lines. I just changed the color of that layer. I'm trying to keep it in a, a neutral gray or black. So here's the front view of those surfaces. So this took a little time also. I needed to create this curve. Uh, this curve is that part that's gonna sit in the middle. I'm just gonna revolve this. Uh, but it needed to be a certain size. So I wanted it to fill up inside and I wanted the closure to have enough height here. So when I trim off this top here, I have a good closure, but I want this nice negative curve up at the top. So again, that took a little time, but uh, once I got that to the right size, then all I have to do is revolve that. So let's go uh, to perspective. And let's look at this in um, wireframe. And I'm gonna to go to my revolve tool, which again is down here. And I'm going to select this line. Just move this over a little bit so we can see hopefully a little better. That's my revolve and I have my center line also. So that's what I need to do next. I'm going to select, um, hold on, and I'll, I'll press enter so I have that point. Okay, so I'm gonna select my center uh, revolve i'm going to do that down here so i have my revolve and i'm also snapping ortho uh, ortho i do not have on so i want to put ortho on to make sure that i do this at a full 360. so i'm actually going to do this in shaded so we can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to start, let's start on this side so I can see, I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna revolve so I can see the part. So now I can see how it's intersecting with the other surfaces. I wanna come all the way over back to where I started right over here. And I'm going to click, oops. I need to enter, and there it is. So now I have that surface, but I can see where it's intersecting. I like how it, the distance it is from the top point of this leaf shape, and I like how it's going down into the center. That's that what took a little time to figure out how that intersection is going to look. Uh, so as you can see, I have all those surfaces still in the center. So what we need to do is uh, trim all the surfaces at the bottom with this piece to open that up. So we're gonna do that next. So that looks good, that's great. It's all one revolve, 360, that's pretty straightforward. So I am going to, let's go to the front so I can see exactly where these are. I want to select all of these surfaces here like this. And I'm going to go to, join that's this uh, puzzle piece looking thing so i'm going to select that and these things kind of blinked a little bit so they should be all connected let's check and see if that worked now when i select that it's all one piece so it's all illuminated now i don't have the bottom on there i'm going to do that uh, at the end so now with that all as one piece uh, the next step is we need to trim that so let's see how this is going to work I'm going to select the trim tool first and see what order we have. So it says select objects to split. We want to split this whole piece here. So we're going to press enter. And then it says select cutting object. So that will be this revolve up here. So I'm going to select that and then enter. So let's see how I did. We want the pieces out here. It looks like I have that. The pieces we don't want in the center, I'm gonna select that. 
and I'm going to delete that. So now we can see we have these two pieces, the bottom piece, and it has been trimmed with that top piece. We also need to trim that top piece. So I want to take the bottom part and use that to trim the top part. So we can do that with the exact same tool and the same functionality. So I'm going to select the uh, tool and it's asking me select object to split. So now it'll be this top part, enter, and then it's uh, select the object to trim away from that. So I'm going to select this bottom object and then press enter. And it now has created that black line. So I'm going to click on this part. See this part down here? I'm going to get rid of that. Delete. Okay, so now we can see all the inside contours and everything lines up nicely. Okay, so we are we are here. We're in pretty good shape. So now what we need to do is connect these two parts. So I have the bottom part and this top part. So I'm going to take those and we are going to with our little join tool, select that, and it blinked. So let's see if we did it, and there it is. It's all one piece now. So the only part that is not, so it's not a um, complete solid yet, so we need to close the top and the bottom, and we have a tool for that. So let's go into surface tools, I believe. Um, maybe it's solid. Yeah, here it is right here. Um, so this, uh, I'm in the solid grouping of tools. And right here, it's it's like this white little cube with the blue part in it, making it look like a panel is coming on there. So the name of this tool is Cap Planar Holes. So in bottle design, this is quite typical. You, we, we usually have a top by the closure, and then we usually have the bottom of the bottle. And it doesn't have to be round. Um, this particular one is. So all I have to do is select that tool and then click on my part, enter. And you can see I have now put a top and a bottom on here and we can see our ISO lines and it is now opaque. And they are connected, so it's all illuminated. So if we go into our properties, we can see your closed solid polysurface. So this is now a solid. And this is critical for this next function because we have all the radiusing that needs to happen. But the next step is to do the uh, radiusing of all these kind of leaf shapes that we have here. Uh, radiusing sequences can be kind of challenging. Uh, here I have a variety of different curved shapes. I have negative fillets, I have positive radiuses, and multiple compound curves, so it's, it, I initially thought this was going to be really challenging, um, but actually I think I got lucky, which is unbelievable, and I'll show you. Quite often I'll radius things in certain order. Uh, I actually think the first time I did this, I radius just these little tops here, all four of those, did those first. And then I think I tried to radius this negative curve, and then I did the chain to get that to work. And I experimented with several different ways to get it to work, and I think I finally got it last time. But I just discovered now, uh, working with this, that it's actually a lot easier than I thought. So um, let me see if I can get this to work again. So I want to go to the front. So this is just the line drawing of it. So it's all of these segments in here. And I think what I discovered, let's go up to my fillet command. Fillet, select edges. So what I'm going to do is select those are all the edges that I want to radius, positive and negative for fillets and everything. So let's go into perspective. Uh, I'm going to press enter. I have all of these set a uh, link handles. Yes, this is very critical. So now I just need to, I'm going to zoom in here so we can see gets a little confusing because I have tons of these things. So these are the two handles, these white dots. This arc here represents 
the fillet that's going to occur in here. And then some of these are positive, but I'm linking them all. I'm going to try to do them all at the same time. So my next step is to select my first handle, which is here. I'm going to select that and then enter. So we can see this is all now purple, which is my select color. I'm going to pick this handle out here. And I'm now going to move this in. And here is my calibration. I think I did this at 60. I'm going to try to do maybe a little bit more. Let's try 70. So I'm releasing. All of the calibrations are now at 70, all at the same time. So let's see if I can do this. I'm going to press Enter. So far, so good. Not bad. Well, impressive. I didn't think I was going to be able to get that. So all of these are radiused all at the same time. Problem areas were down in here, this little negative dot down here. Sometimes I didn't fill in and I didn't get good cohesion right here where that intersection is on the outside, but it looks like this worked. So uh, let's hope it's that easy for everybody, uh, but it can be quite challenging. All right, so we can double check to make sure that worked. So I'm gonna select my entire object and go up to my properties. And it says closed solid poly surface. That's a good thing to have because if something went wrong and one of these little intersections didn't work, it would become a surface again. And it would just be a poly surface, which I don't want. I need this to be a solid because that helps for when we save these out for a CNC machining and 3D printing, we need it to be a solid. So that turned out really, really well. What's nice is I'm holding these edges pretty firm. We don't want them to be too soft. Um, but we need it to be radius enough. So if I uh, made this bottle out of glass or if I made it out of plastic, I'd be able to uh, get that to work without being, without breaking in the mold. So let's just go back to this other layer. I'll show you the difference. The one I did probably about a year ago. Uh, let's see, where do I have that? And here it is. So we can see the difference in the radiuses. See, I had this a little bit softer. This was a different sequence. These are a little bit rounder. It's not bad. It still looks really nice. I'm holding good edges. But I think I did this sequence differently. You can see how, how round it is down in here. Hmm. Amazing. Well, okay. So that worked. So let's go back to the part that we're working on. Now, these other ones should be relatively easy. Uh, what we're going to do is put, I'm gonna put a nice generous radius up on here. I'm going to slice this off and make the cap. So we'll go back to our uh, fillet. And we're going to do edges. So I'm going to select that edge. That's continuous. So enter. And here comes our little handle arrangement. So let's do it about here. So I'm going to select this handle first. Enter. And then I select this handle here and I can move that. And that will show me what my radius looks like. So I don't remember exactly what I did, but it's something around here. So I'm going to deselect and then press enter. And then it rounds that whole top edge. So that's a pretty uh, straightforward uh, piece to do there. And the bottom is the same thing. I don't know if I even need to go through that. It's the same operation. We just select that and radius that bottom. And then the last part I did, which is pretty straightforward, I just took a line and uh, trimmed off the lid. Uh, cut a line area there to make that uh, separate part. So let's go back to the original bottle I had here. So here is my body, and then here is my cap. I just trimmed that off. So let's just move that. And that would be my closure. So right now I'm not detailing the finish, the thread pattern, and all that. That's that's a whole nother set of operations to do that. I'm just uh, working on sculpting and getting these uh, aesthetics to work. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. And I will be doing several more uh, bottle builds in uh, Rhino.